Hello everyone and welcome back to Project Ozone Reloaded Titan Mode. This is episode 24. Before we get started today, uh, I do want to take care of some quests first. This episode is going to be all about ore processing, but I need to do a couple of small things first. So let me go upstairs and we'll take a look at that. Okay, I need to do a little bit of questing. Let's take a look at what I've finished between episodes. Since I had gold ore now as a result of the MFR mining machine, uh, I was able to go ahead and complete all of the rest of these early sort of agricraft, native to agricraft crop quests. So I finished the gold plant, and I finished the diamond plant. This one says it unlocks a quest elsewhere, but I think it's just decrementing the counter on the final page. If we uh, go in here and open these bags up, let's see what we got. Uh, some rods. And more of that stuff. Okay, let me just toss this stuff away. And... We will talk about the other quests that I need to do before I proceed to ore processing because I need to actually have another machine that I don't have. And that is, I want to go ahead and use the Extreme Furnace and the Furnace Upgrade. Now, I have not been using these furnaces that much. And the reason I haven't been doing them is because, really, there's they're not that much different from a vanilla furnace. But they do differ in one way significantly, which is that they do ore doubling if you put the uh, ore processing upgrade in it. And they will double some things that you cannot double using any of the other machines. So I want to make sure that I have one of these available for doing certain processing. So let me come over here and make the extreme furnace, which involves ender-infused obsidian, eyes of ender, Aerotheum dust and Enderium gears, as well as the previous tier furnace, and I think I have all of those things. So let's get the furnace in the middle and Ender infused obsidian. I'll have to make a couple more and there we go. I need Aerotheum dust which I do have set up as a crafting recipe in the system. I forget why I did it. Probably just set up all of those dusts. Um, let's see, what else was in here? Eyes of Ender. And then the final item I'm missing is an Endurium gear. Which I actually don't have. Let's go ahead and set that recipe up in the system. That recipe is a processing pattern. We're going to need four of these ingots. And I will go ahead and take this downstairs and toss it into the appropriate spot so that I can get a gear to use for configuring the recipe. That one goes right here. So let's just put these in the hopper. And it should spit out one gear for us. Now, some of these gears were spitting out one gear for every one ingot that you put in the machine. That was fixed with the latest update, which will have been out for some time by the time you see this. But I recently updated a couple episodes ago. So it should be doing what it's supposed to be doing now. Okay. Put that there get the recipe pattern. I can go ahead and pull the furnace out. Let's go ahead and configure this. It should be on a hopper and it should be a hopper that already has a gear on it. So there we go. Alright, now the other piece of this of course is I do want to use RF power and I'm going to use some upgrades. So let's do the furnaces upgraded one. For this one I need a BFESU, a better furnace's electric heat source, an upgrade package, and a storage upgrade. And I actually do not know recipes for any of those things. 
So starting with the BFE SU, it's a diamond in the middle, redstone on the top and bottom, and iron down the sides. That is pretty straightforward. So let's put that in there. And diamond. That recipe is so straightforward you would almost expect it to conflict with something. Alright, the heat source is iron along the bottom and um, one on the top and then redstone on the top corners and coal through the middle. That seems reasonably straightforward as well. A lot of redstone, but that's okay. I only need one. Okay, and upgrade package. A couple of crafting tables, chest, and gold on the corners. So, gold. Crafting tables. I need two of those. And then there was a chest in the center. I'll need one of those. Alright, so there's the upgrade package. I probably won't be using this. What this does is if you uh, right click it here, it lets you put up to three upgrades and put them into one sort of package. You can actually nest them to get even more upgrade packages in here. I think I'm only going to be using two upgrades though, and the machine holds three, so I probably don't need the upgrade package at this point. Somebody who knows more about this mod, feel free to correct me on that, but I believe that's all I'm going to need. Uh, storage upgrade, chest, stone, and glass. So we'll put the chest there. glass here. I might go ahead and use this upgrade as well. I don't think it's going to be essential. At least not for what I'm doing. Okay, so there's our storage upgrade. Now there are two other upgrades I want to do. Let me go ahead and finish this quest off. And we do get a color upgrade, a quarter heart, a chance cube, and a reward back here. Horse armor. Don't need it. Uh, all of these will get pulverized up or smelted down at some point. I'm getting quite a few of them from loot bags. Okay, so I'll put away the color upgrade because I definitely won't be using it. I'll put away the upgrade package for now. I don't believe I'm going to be using it. So, eh, for now I'll put away the storage upgrade as well. The, the one that I want, there are two of them, I want the or processing upgrade and I want the fuel efficiency upgrade but I don't want the tiers that I have that I've gotten I've gotten these from reward bags I think I don't want these tiers of them I want the next tier because I don't want to have to be replacing them and if we look at the in NEI here there's an ore processing upgrade and an advanced ore processing upgrade and the difference between them is that this one lasts forever so let's spend some diamonds, pistons, and obsidian to upgrade this. I'll have to make a couple of pistons. And obsidian is easy enough. I'm getting to where I have quite a bit of it. And diamonds. So I have something wrong here. It's probably that. Okay, there's our advanced ore processing upgrade. Now the other one is going to be the fuel efficiency upgrade, and it has the same sort of thing going on. So there's the regular one, which is the one I have, and there's the advanced one, and the difference is the, the advanced one lasts forever. So this one requires a gas tier on top, diamonds, and eyes of ender. And I have over 4,000 gas tiers at this point. I'm growing them using crops. Eyes of Ender. I'll need one more of those. 
and then diamonds. So there's our advanced fuel efficiency upgrade. Let's go downstairs and set this up. I am going to need some conduits to do that, so let me grab some of those. I'll need energy and item conduits. Okay, so here I am back on the ore processing level, and I'm going to set this furnace up right here. And I'll go ahead and set up the BFESU next to it. This is a block that accepts energy, and it allows energy to be fed to this furnace. To actually exploit the energy, I need to take this electric heat source and put it in the fuel slot like that. And it will show how much energy is available. Right now it's none because I have not hooked up power to this machine. Let's go ahead and do that. Just like that. So now this machine lit up and it showed that it had power and I'm full power here. Alright. Um, I do want the advanced ore processing upgrade in this for sure. I actually don't know that the fuel efficiency upgrade will do anything if you're running it off of RF. But I'm going to assume that it does and put it in here. If it doesn't, then it probably won't make any difference. So that will be fine. Now, the way that I have everything set up here, let's just talk about that for just a minute before I finish setting up this device. I am using storage drawers for filtering again. And the reason I'm doing that is that each one of these, the whole system here works off of Ender IO, and each one of these systems is really sort of a moving from one channel to another. So for example, this first one, which is labeled red 2AE system, accepts input from the green channel and outputs on the red channel. And it really outputs immediately. These are not intended for storage, although they will provide some buffering. All they're really doing is moving things from one channel to another because everything that goes on the red channel ultimately ends up going here into this ME interface and getting sent into the AE system. So that's how all of this is working. If we look at this one over here that says black magnetic craft crusher, then this is accepting input on the green channel and it is sending on the black channel and the black channel goes to a magnetic craft crusher which is one of these machines over here that I'll talk about in a minute. And so for each one of these stacks of storage drawers they represent a different portion of the processing of materials and I can program how particular materials are processed simply by going and putting them into a locked storage drawer so that that locked storage drawer accepts that item. Every, every one of these is accepting on the green channel and outputting on a different channel that leads to a particular processing station. All of the processing stations then take an output on the green channel again so that things can go on to the next stage of processing and they accept input on whatever channel they're on. Now there is this chest right here which is right next to the tesseract that's coming from the um, ore source if you will is also this one is the only one that's set up to input and output on the same channel it inputs on the green channel so that it can catch anything that has no location for it and it also outputs on the green channel so that everything here is made available for placing on these other items. So this serves as both the source for the input and the sort of overflow to catch things that are not handled. It also serves as sort of a buffer of final resort if there's a little bit of a problem and the, these run out of buffering capacity. So right now it's loaded up with a whole bunch of ores. A lot of these came from the um, laser drill not all of them. Some of them are things that I've mined in the past in the nether. But I'm going to show how these get set up as soon as I get to that point. I will show that in this episode. So coming back over here to this extreme furnace, one of the stations over here is yellow, better furnace. And the generator downstairs is a little noisy here. But because it says yellow, that means that 
stuff that is destined for better furnaces, furnaces, uh, is on the yellow channel. So let me come over here and I will stick a conduit on here and I'm going to make it go for both in and out. And I might have to rearrange this because this furnace looks like a vanilla furnace and it may or may not input and output on the channels I'm expecting. I'll see. Uh, but what I want to do here is I want to have an input on um, the yellow channel. Just like that. And like everything else, it's going to extract an output on the green channel, which is the default. Okay, so we're set up here, and I should be able to go ahead and connect it up that way. And we're now connected on the network. And there's nothing coming in here just yet, but it did pull out my upgrade, so I'm not going to be able to hook it up quite this way. Let me go ahead and move this to a more appropriate configuration for a vanilla furnace. It's going to want the... Um, the top, the bottom, and the side. So if I come over here and put this in here, I believe the way this is going to need to work, and it's been a while since I set up a vanilla furnace, is we're going to insert on the top, and that's going to be in the yellow channel. And it's already started getting a bunch of stuff. Let me take this and put it back over here. And then it would normally do, I think, fuel on the bottom, but I don't need to do anything on the bottom, so let me remove that one because I just don't need it at all. And put the fuel in there. And then I'll need to put this over here next to it and hook this back up with a conduit. Just like so. Okay. And then the product needs to come out the back. Let me go ahead and connect it on the back. It's already connected and it's already pulling out on green since that's the default. So I think that's going to do it. Um, maybe just make this a little neater by going and... Well, not yet. Let me set something else, something up that will go in that furnace. Now one of the things that I'm doing here that may seem just a little weird. Why do I have the heat source back here? I guess it wants the fuel on... on the back. Which means that I should disconnect this and put this down here and dig a little hole here. And this will be the extract. Let's see if that extracts the fuel. That doesn't seem to be extracting the fuel. Okay. Like I said, it's been a while since I've set up a vanilla furnace like this. So we get input on the top, output on the bottom, and then fuel, which we are actually not providing at all, in one of the sides, in this case the back. All right. So to test this out, I'm going to smelt some slag. Now when you smelt slag, it will give you rock wool. And it may seem a little silly that I would be doing this, but understand that all of this ore processing is processing materials that for the most part I don't actually need in the form that they're provided. What this is really doing in, from a certain perspective over the long term is it's providing a source of EMC. This is sort of an EMC factory for Project E. And most of these resources will probably eventually get melted down and made into other things that simply can't be mined. So keeping that in mind, we want to get as high a throughput of EMC as possible. So if a material like rock wool has only very limited uses and there are a couple of crafting recipes that that we'll get to at some point that do use it but it's not much but if this can produce a substantial amount of rock wool as a side effect well rock wool it turns out has the same EMC value as an iron ingot 
So that's basically like getting extra iron ingots out of this thing as a bonus. So I am going to go ahead and take advantage of this to produce additional EMC effectively. Now at the moment what this is going to be doing is this is doing sort of the middle tier of ore processing for this mod pack. At the lowest tier you have things like the smeltery and from Tinker's Construct and the pulverizer and um, that sort of thing which, which will go and double your ores. And this machine will also double your ores. In the middle tier, for the metal ores at least, you can run them through all of these magnetic craft machines in order to triple them. And if you go up another tier, eventually you, you will get to the mechanism machines, and at that point you'll be able to quintuple them, which is to multiply them fivefold. So you can get more and more ore as you go along. Right now, I'm only going to be doing a little better than tripling on metal ores. Some of the other materials will be processed a little bit differently and will give a much bigger bonus, and that's why there are all these different kinds of processing going on here with the ability to route items to where they need to go in the next process. Okay, so I wanted to test this machine. I wanted to use rock wool to do it, so let me grab a piece of rock wool or slag out of the, the machine here. And I'm going to come over here to where it says yellow, better furnaces, and I'm just going to pop this item in there. And what that's going to do is it's going to start pulling slag out of this chest, and I can already see that I'm getting lots of light gray rock wool into the system here, and it's coming through because this machine is busy processing that and I'm hoping it's doubling it. I don't, it doesn't look, it looks like it might not have doubled it. No. So I didn't really need to run this particular material through that machine because I didn't gain any benefit from doing so. But it still works as a generic um, smelter. There's probably nothing that will double the amount of rock wool that you're getting from slag. So now I want to get this in the AE system, so let me take my light gray rock wool and here I have red to AE system and if I just pop a rock wool in there it's all going to get pulled out of here and it's going to head off into the AE system. So we're doing great there. Now there are a few other things that I already have set up in testing. One of them is like this glowstone. It just disappeared because it is set up here if I get glowstone, just send it straight to the AE system. And I've set up basic processing for a couple of materials that I wanted to get sort of started with here. Let's take something and run it all the way through that's a typical metal to see how it gets processed. Now the first ore in processing, copper. Do I have any copper? That's, yeah, dense nether copper right here. This is the most this is the ore that requires the most processing, so I'm going to start with this one. And if we were to go and look this up in NEI, dense nether copper, which is this one right here, and we look at what we can produce with this, um, in a pulverizer it will produce four nether copper ore, and that is probably the best we can get. In fact, that appears to be the only way to process this. So we want to send this to a pulverizer. And I've got a pulverizer set up over here. It's right here. And so the pulverizer has its own... Like it's on the light blue channel right here. And I can take this dense nether copper ore, put it right in there, and all of it that is in the chest should be pulled out and processed and it's already done because it's, it's working very quickly. Right now I'm not getting much throughput on this system because I'm just using materials that are coming from the laser and what I had on hand but eventually I will actually have quarries running and I will need a system that's relatively fast and this should be fast enough and it should be somewhat scalable because I can add more of some of these machines if I need to and just put them on the same channel and have them process the additional materials. I'm going to turn down the sound on that that uh, 
just a little bit and maybe I won't have so much trouble with that machine being loud. Okay, so the next step in processing nether copper ore, uh, we started with the dents, now we've just got the regular nether copper ore. And if we look at how that is processed, what we see is that we can run it through a grindstone and we'll get four pulverized copper and we can um, just do smelting on it and it doubles and we can run it through a pulverizer to get four of that plus a little nether rack as a side effect. Uh, some of this stuff here requires rich slag and, and cinnabar and I don't have that so I'm not going to worry too much about that. We can melt it directly down in the magma crucible to get what looks like maybe I don't know around six ingots or something like that uh, maybe alloy smelter will give two just like regular smelting so there are a lot of options for it the option I actually want to use is I want to go ahead and smelt it in the better furnace over here because I believe that that will quadruple the ore Basically, if smelting gives two of them, then running it through this machine, it will often give four. So let's take and see how much of this we've got. We've got nine nether copper ore total. No, we don't. We have 64 plus nine. Let me pull the 64 out for testing, and we'll deal with that in just a minute. But I want to just get the nine right there and see if we get 18 or if we get 36. So let me take and I'll put the other 8 back in here since we are doing testing here. I'm going to come over here to where it says to go to better furnace and I'm going to put the copper, the nether copper ore in there. So it's going to come over here and it looks like it has already finished smelting all of it. So did we get 36 copper or did we get um, nine. And you know I can't tell because I already had copper ore in here. Let's do this test again with no copper ore in here whatsoever. Now I'll just take four and I'm either looking to, I'm looking to see if I get eight or if I get sixteen back. Um, so let's put that in there. And I got sixteen back. So that is going to be the optimal processing for this. Let's go ahead and put all that in there. Now we need to move on to processing of copper ore. And the best way to do this is going to be through magnetic craft because we will triple it going through magnetic craft as opposed to doubling it going through the, the better furnace over there. And we'll actually get a little bit more than tripling because you do get some bonus materials along the way. So we're going to send this to the magnetic craft crusher, which means I'm going to put it here in this bank of storage drawers and I should start getting chunks. So copper chunks. Chunks will actually go to the next tier magnetic craft which is the grinder. So I'll just put that copper there and I should start getting back rubble. Copper rubble. That gets a second process a pass through the grinder so we're gonna put it right there and I should start getting pebbles. And I've got my pebbles these go through the magnetic craft sifter which is where the actual tripling takes place so the sifter I'm gonna put it right in there and it's gonna start going through there and I should start getting copper and gold dust so pulverized copper and pulverized gold right there these I need to smelt down these will not be doubled by the better furnaces I've already checked that it won't double them what I can do though is I can run them through um, an induction smelter with sand and this will not double them but it will produce the, sl the uh, slag as a side effect which means I can get a little additional EMC out of the process. So let me come over here and find where this leads to the induction smelter. So I will put the copper in there and the gold in there and I said it backwards but hopefully you knew what I meant. So we should be getting copper and gold ingots over here and we are. 
let me take my copper ingots and my gold ingots. These are ready to go back to the um, AE system, so I will toss those in there. And I have now completed a processing chain for copper ore, which when it runs to completion will mean that there will be no copper ore in this particular box anymore. So I just need to repeat this process of configuring for each of the different ores in here in order to get it set up optimally. Now, all the metals will actually work very similarly to what I just did. Let's take a look at a non-metal. Um, I think maybe Nether Peridot is going to be the next one. The Peridots have been something that's been kind of a bane. They're used in, in making the laser. And I just have not had enough of them. This should get me plenty. I don't have any dense nether peridot at this point. If I did, if we process this correctly, I think we can get a whole stack of peridots from one dense nether peridot ore. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take the regular peridot ore, which I is all I've got right now. This is going to go into the furnace here, the better furnace's furnace. Normally this would be doubled by smelting, but it will be quadrupled going through this furnace. So I'm going to come over here and put it in here. Yellow, better furnace. And this should produce peridot ore, some of which I already have on hand. So all of that's been processed and I'm getting peridot ore back. If I take this peridot ore, if you smelt it, you get two peridots, I think. Let's take a look. looks like just one. But if we run it through this other smelter, it will double it and we'll get two. So let's come over here and put it there. We're going to send it to the better furnace. And we should start getting lots of peridots. Okay. So these are ready to go back to the AE system, so again, I will just take and plop them in here. And all of these ores can just be processed in this way, and it's, it's reasonably straightforward once you get the basics set up with all the channels to just route everything to where it needs to go. And it's very flexible. If in the future I decide that I want to process something a little bit differently, I can pull that drawer, remove the item from it, and put it in whatever drawer I want it to go to in order to route it. So when I start doing mechanism processing, I probably don't have enough space on this platform to do all the mechanism processing, but I can take and put a, another one of these banks of storage drawers up here and just hook a tesseract up to it to send it to where I actually am doing the mechanism processing, and that will get me my mechanism processing. And I can just move things over piecewise, so I don't have to start with something that's with everything at once. I can just move it over a little bit at a time and get all of that configured. So we're in pretty good shape down here now. I do need to go between episodes and reconfigure all these. Let's take a brief look at these magnetic craft machines because they are um, important to the ore tripling process that's sort of this intermediate game ore processing. The first one here is the crusher. This takes your metal ores and crushes them into chunks. And it just has an input over... It's actually got... The way I've got it set up, this side is the input, and this other side over here is the output. And I think that's very consistent. I can't... It's, it's a little hard to tell on some of these machines which side is the input and which is the output. It's maybe a little more intuitive on some of them than others. This one, they're at the same level, so it's not clear. But things do, at least in the way I've got it set up, they will go from left to right. So these are, what are these things? Grinders. Okay. There are two of them because there are two grinding steps. So I went ahead and set up two machines. I might need more at some point. At the moment, I obviously don't. These take their input on the top, and their output comes out the side and sort of the back over here. 
So there's another one of those I.O. ports right there. And these convert chunks into rubble and rubble into uh, pebbles. Now, the final machine over here is the sifter. The sifter produces, takes pebbles and it produces pulverized whatever from it. And it has an input over on this side and an output on this side. And so it's not actually taking input in the top, but the output is lower down. It's got all of these um, switches on the front of it, and it's got some gauges over here. You do want to turn the switches on. I haven't actually looked at what it does with the switches. You do want them on. I don't think it will function if they're all off, but you'll have to flip them from their original state. In any case, all of these machines require magnetic craft power rather than RF. So there is a machine that will convert RF into magnetic craft power, and each one of these machines has one of them next to it, and that is this RF alternator. So I've just got RF coming in one side over here, and it's get producing magnetic craft power that comes out the other side and goes into the machine. So I'm using low voltage cables from magnetic craft. All these machines run off low voltage in order to feed the power in it. And that's really all there is to it. You do need to do that. You can set up magnetic craft power systems if you want to power them. I have always just chosen to use the alternator because RF is what the rest of the base runs on, so it tends to be very convenient. Now these are all multi-block structures, and the way they're set up is, let me just set up a grinder here. They have a control block that actually defines what the block is. And for the grinder, at least, I'm just going to take in, plop one of those down temporarily because I need to set it up one level off the ground. Now, I think I demonstrated this general process in my video on plastic production for pneumaticraft, but if we take and right-click on this, it will show a ghost of what a grinder looks like and we can see all these blocks. You can sort of tell what they are. These are, um, I forget the names of all these blocks off the top of my hand. There are blocks that look like these that are made. If you, when you click it, it also gives you a message. It says error in minus 252, 42, 950 with the block multi-block chassis. That means that I have misplaced a block at that particular set of coordinates. And you can go and decipher all these sets of coordinates to try and debug your build with it. Multi-block chassis is what most of these machines are mostly composed of, which is these blocks here with the sort of texture on the side of them. This is like a power input over here, and then on um, back over here we've got an item I.O. It's called, I think, a multi-block I.O. There's one on the top and one on the back. This particular structure, most of these are solid, but this particular structure is hollow. It's a little hard to tell in here, but if you look closely, you can see that there are no blocks there. If you get all of the blocks laid out according to the template, when you right-click the block here, it will form up the multi-block structure, and you can then hook up your conduits and your power, and it will start working for you. The way that these actually process the ore is you're going from ore to chunks to rubble and then to pebbles and then finally to pulverized whatever. So if we, if we were doing iron, we would end up getting pulverized iron. And for each ore that went into this process, we would get three pulverized iron out of the resulting chain. Each step along the way can produce bonuses just like the thermal expansion machines do. In the case of iron, you would get bonuses of both iron and both pulverized iron and pulverized ferrous. So you would get additional bonuses of iron and nickel out of out of that for processing iron. So you are getting a little bit better than tripling. I think if you figure it all up over the long run, you'll probably get about 315% of the original material plus a 15% of whatever bonus it's producing, if it produces one. 
So copper, you'll get some gold out of it, that sort of thing. So I guess that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I have covered what I need to cover, which is very specifically all of this ore processing. Uh, I do want to go ahead and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, or share, and I will see you next episode.